Hey there, this is Handyman007 and in this video, I'm going to show you how I installed this modern design chandelier in our dining room. Now, this isn't your average lighting installation since as you can see, the chandelier holds not one, not two, but three light bulbs. So the question now becomes, how do we connect the wirings from this fixture to the wirings coming from the ceiling and where everything is controlled by a single light switch? Watch onwards and get to learn the basics of parallel versus series circuits. Here we go. To understand why I'm even installing a new dining area light fixture, let me show you our 6-year-old drop light. See how it is hanging so low it's almost touching the dining table? Well, it's not supposed to be like this. One day, the spring action cable that connects the ceiling mount and the lamp just snapped beyond practical repair. The electrical connection is still intact but the ability to retract or extend it to any preferred height is simply lost. In a manner of speaking, our drop light has dropped permanently. So my brother and I went to Wilcon Depot and bought this drop light manufactured by Apollo Lightings. We got this specific model for a little over 2,000 pesos. Let's open this up and see what's inside. We have the ceiling bracket and cover. We have this assembly instruction. And one, two, and three lamp fixtures. Okay, let's take these outside and set it up. I gotta warn you, the assembly instruction is just a one-page diagram with no actual instructions. I literally had to spend 30 minutes off-camera figuring things out. So let me break down the assembly steps and more importantly, the wiring steps for you. First, we insert all three lamp fixture cables through their respective holes on the cover. Note that inside each cable are two electrical wires that run from the opposing terminals of each lamp's E27 light socket. I'll explain the wirings later, but for now, all we need to do is secure each cable with their respective metal sleeve, washer, and nut. By the way, on the side of each metal sleeve is an adjustment screw. If loosened, it allows you to push in or pull out the cable according to your preference. You can configure all three cables to extend equally, or if you want to be more creative, have them dangle in varying lengths. Then simply tighten the adjustment screws to lock the cables into place. Second, the system came with this wire connector with three sets of opposing terminals. Note that a terminal on one side is connected inside to the opposite terminal on the other side to make a pair. And each pair is not connected to the other pairs. With this knowledge, I take all the blue wires from the three cables and twist them together. Then I do the same with the brown wires. and I wrap electrical tape to secure each group. The blue group corresponds to one side of each of the lamp's light socket, and the brown group corresponds to the other side of each of the lamp's light socket. Then I screw in each group to a terminal in the connector, making sure that the groups are not on the same pair. Now, we have done the initial step in creating a parallel circuit. And to explain this better, let's use diagrams. Finding value from this video? Hit subscribe and the bell icon to get notified of new uploads. Thanks! Before I can explain what a parallel circuit is and its advantage over a series circuit, let's start with a basic single bulb setup. Connected to the bulb, or more accurately to its socket terminals, is a brown wire and a blue wire. The actual colors of the wires may be different and I'm just using brown, blue, and black for illustration purposes. The blue wire is connected to a black wire from the ceiling that connects to one terminal on the light switch. 
Meanwhile, the brown wire is connected to a second black wire from the ceiling that leads to a power source, typically your circuit breaker or main fuse box. Then there's a third black wire that connects your circuit breaker and the opposing terminal on the light switch. This wire can run underground, inside the walls, or also above your ceiling. And as you may already know, if the circuit breaker and the light switch are turned on, a closed circuit is created where electricity can flow and thereby lighting up the bulb. Pretty straightforward. However, the wiring becomes a little bit tricky if we are dealing with two or more light bulbs that still have to be controlled by a single light switch. We can connect the light socket sequentially like this, where the socket wires in between form a chain and the two wires at the end connect to the two wires from the ceiling respectively. This is called a series. But the problem with this connection is that if one bulb or its wires break, it opens the circuit and cuts the flow of electricity altogether. All it takes is one to go down for everything to go down. Now this is a parallel circuit, where all three light bulbs or sockets have direct connection to the wires from the ceiling. So even if one bulb or its wires break, the other two light bulbs still have contact with the ceiling wires and therefore keep the closed circuit intact. Heck, even if we have two blown light bulbs, the last one will still remain lit because a path for electricity to flow will still remain. This is the benefit of having multiple lights connect in parallel with one another. And this is exactly why I have grouped all the brown wires and the blue wires respectively because we are creating a parallel circuit. So let's turn off all the power from the switch and from the main circuit breaker so we don't risk getting electrocuted working with the wires. We just need to cut off our old drop light and remove all of its parts from the ceiling. Leaving only the two wires coming from above. Then we mount the bracket into position, making sure that it's square with the room or the dining table below. I won't be able to bring my camera up the ceiling and give you a close-up shot, so let me tell you what I'm about to do. After stripping a half inch off the two wires coming from the ceiling, I will connect one of them here and the other here. Doing so will complete our parallel circuit, like I showed you in the diagram earlier. By the way, it doesn't matter which wire from the ceiling goes to what terminals here. Unlike with batteries which use DC, there are no positive or negative wires or terminals when it comes to AC. The important thing is never to let the wires from the ceiling touch each other directly. Alright, here we go. And after installing new LED bulbs, let's switch on everything. Now you know the difference between parallel and series circuits, or at least the basics. In my channel, I have more videos on lighting and wiring so please check them out. I'll even leave a few of them in the description below or at the end of this video. Feel free to share this video, give it a like and comment or ask questions down below. This is Handyman007, thanks for watching.